It's such a nice day, right? I don't want to be trapped all day. Really. Yeah, it'd be really nice to go on the diag and you know, throw some frisbee, right? Yeah. Maybe they should build some bench there so we have some where to sit instead of the stone. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be really nice to stop sitting on this yeah. stone wall <laughs> all day. Yeah. Anyway, back so to work. Yeah. Our group focuses on atom probe tomography. Uh, it's a characterization technique that uses the atom probe. The atom probe has two major parts, the specimen and the detector. Uh, the specimen can be made out of a variety of different materials. We focus primarily on metals. I'm working on a magnesium alloy. Uh, and I'm working on a computational model of the tungsten uh, specimen. So how does the atom probe work? Well, the atom probe will generate a voltage from 1 volt to 10 kilovolt, and then the atom here will be ionized and hit the detector. In order for this to be successful, our specimen needs to be extremely sharp. The radius, as seen here, is typically about 50 to 100 nanometers. So from the atom probe, we can get three pieces of information. The first one is time of flight. The second one, specimen to detector distance. And the third one is mass to charge ratio. The time of flight is simply the amount of time it takes for an ion to fly from its ionized position to the detector. The specimen to detector distance is simply the distance between the tip and the detector. And finally, the mass to charge ratio is the ratio between the mass of the specific ion being ionized and the charge that that ion possesses. Yeah, and using this three pieces of information, we can use computer to build a model uh, to show what the specimen looks like at the atomic scale. Hey, Tim, what are you doing? Oh, hey. Okay. So what I have here is one of the uh, metal needles that I was talking about. And I'm working with a magnesium alloy, as you can see. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that ideal shape of the very fine tip that we were talking about earlier. Can you see it? Yeah. All right, so what I have is I have a setup where I use some acid and I create an electro current to tear away layers and layers of this metal so I can get that really fine needle shape that I'm eventually going to put into the atom probe. Uh, we want this really fine shape because when we run that electric field through it, we don't want it to be too fat uh, or too wide so that it causes the specimen to break. We want that really fine shape so that eventually the shape will turn out to be round in a nice curve. How's that work coming, Tim? Uh, it's good. I'm almost done with everything. Get back to Alright, so we're in EMAL, stands for Electron Microbeam Analysis Laboratory. This is where you can find all the really fancy instruments that undergraduate students shouldn't be touching. Um, yeah, here you're going to find the Atom Probe. Let's go check it out. Alright, so we're at the Atom Probe. This is where the magic happens. Uh, so we have our metal tip that we had earlier. It's in the machine. And within the machine, uh, there's a very high electric field passing through that tip. Um, ionizing ions, and those ions will be flying off of our metal specimen, hitting that detector plate. Uh, from that, we can calculate the time of flight that each ion has, uh, flying from the original position to the detector plate. So this is the screen that tells us what's going on inside the atom probe. The histogram tells us the number of hits uh, that the detector gets. It's basically a heat map showing where all the atoms are hitting the detector. The detector ion map tells us which specific ions are hitting that detector. So for example, uh, the yellow dots are hydrogen atoms. Uh, the voltage curve basically tells us the amount of uh, voltage that's passing through the, nano, the, through the tip. Um, and in order to steadily ionize the entire tip, you have to slowly increase that voltage. Uh, alongside that, you have your concentration which is basically the amount, the concentration of your specific ions that are flying off your specimen and hitting that 
detector plate, as well as your mass spectrum, where you can uh, see your mass to charge ratio, as we said earlier, and the number of times that specific mass to charge ratio is being detected on that plate. Hey Tim, how do you like using the Atom Pro? Uh, it's great. I get to see my good friend, uh, Mr. Fruitfly, every day. Hey Sean, what are you doing? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Uh, here, I'm building a model of the tip, and I will evaluate the potential and electric field at, on the top of the uh, tip. The red color represent higher electric field, and the blue color represent uh, lower field. And then I can run the simulation. Here is a video of the simulation. As you can see, the atom is evaporated one by one, and by collecting the information, we can uh, improve the reconstruction scripts and get a better result. You can see the work is hard and coding takes a lot of time, but that's the work and I will make it. But once we've gathered our uh, data from the Atom Probe, we can uh, use that data uh, specifically the time of flight information, the mass to charge ratio information, and go back to the computer and do essentially a reconstruction using that data to put together what we have created through the metal tip. So here you can see a reconstruction that we've done and essentially this is what a, a computer model of our metal tip looks like. And then as you can see every single, single one of these little dots represents uh, an individual atom. Now what you're seeing is not actually the atom itself, but a uh, computer model of that atom given the amount of time it uh, flew from the tip to the detector and the mass to charge ratio of that each specific atom. Um, what we're specifically looking for in this particular project is clusters within the sample. Uh, and so here we have our cluster information. So this is the exact same tip as before, but now we're only focusing on the clusters, and we can see that the different colors here represent different atoms or different elements within the clusters. So the purple is magnesium, blue is neodymium, yellow is yttrium, so on and so forth. And so atom probe tomography allows us to see different structures and uh, characterize specific materials on the atomic level, which is something that's really unique to atom probe tomography. So, during our time in the Marquis group, uh, there were three steps to our research. First was sample preparation, second was testing, and the third was analysis and modeling. And these three steps introduced us to atom probe tomography and its computational models, uh, which shows us how powerful a characterization method it is. What did you learn this summer, Sean? coding.